Today's episode is brought to you by Audible, the leading provider of spoken word entertainment and audiobooks. Get a free trial membership and one free audiobook when you sign up at audibletrial.com slash BJ Dell. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Let's Draw. I'm your host, BJ Dell, and today's video is an introduction to character design. I've had a bunch of people ask me in the past exactly how I start out making a new character, kind of the thought process that goes into it, how I approach it. So I decided that I needed a mascot for my YouTube channel and for my Keep Creating and Let's Draw brands. So I decided to do this video today. I'll walk you through my thought process from the concept stage all the way up to the sketch and inking stage. So if you want to learn all about that and more, keep watching. All right, guys, let's go ahead and start the video. Like I said during the beginning, this is going to be kind of an introduction to how I approach character design, my thought process, what I look for, what I think about to get to a final design when I start a new character. So if you guys are here just for the drawing and the sketching part and don't want to hear all of that because there's going to be a lot of talking to begin with, I'll put a time code down at the bottom so you can jump ahead in the video to the actual drawing part. So I'll go ahead and stop right here you guys can go ahead and leave and then everybody else will hang around and we'll come back to you guys later okay now that they're gone we can get to what you guys want to hear about and that's all about my thought processes behind a new character i appreciate you guys sticking with me and not hitting that button to skip ahead so let's go ahead and jump in i've got this on the screen right now by the way, the screen, iPad Pro, 12.9 inch, fourth gen model, Apple Gen 2 pencil. The app is Procreate. I say that every time because somebody always asks, oh, what kind of iPad are you using? I say it every time, but I still have people in the comment section that ask the exact same question, which means they skip ahead too, but can leave comments and ask questions that I don't answer because I've already answered them. <sighs> okay, now that I've vented, let's get back to it. Um, this I've got on screen. This is basically my... I guess, advertisement or my splash page for my Gumroad brush set. And I've got this panda bear here, and I love this panda. Super cute. I still love this design. Drew it over a year ago, and I still come back to it because I think it's cool. So I want to basically make a character or a mascot for the channel, for my brand. When I start to you know do other stuff online, I'm going to kind of have this mascot character as Let's Draw with BJ Dell. It's going to be one and one, same thing tied in. I thought about using this panda, but at the same time, I decided I didn't want to. That's why I've got him on screen to talk about some stuff. So since it's going to be almost like a brand ambassador, uh, this panda here, mean mugging a little bit. You know, he's kind of got that rough and tumble look on his face. So doesn't really read that well. Of course, we could go ahead and change the eyes and have him a little bit more, you know, nice looking and less mean. But at the same time, I think there's a different route that I could go with on this just because I think this is limited. Uh, I started thinking about different routes I wanted to go before the video. Okay, do I want to make just a cartoon character design of myself? And that's been done to death. So many people do that, and I didn't really want to do that because on top of everything else, I mean, I change my appearance quite a lot. So I will shave and have a beard and not have a beard and then have a hat on or not have a hat on, long hair, short hair. It, it's always changing. So if I do that, it could change and it's not going to tie in. It's not going to be a cohesive look and feel. So I think I want to stick with an animal. Like I said, this panda doesn't work out the best because of the stuff we've talked about already. But I think going back to the drawing board and thinking about what I wanted to do, I came up with the idea of doing a raccoon. And there's a couple reasons here. So let's look at this design here and see what works. So I like the shape of the head here. Super cool. Love that. I like the circles around the eyes. So this is very cool because you can see here, I don't even have eyebrows on this guy. I could have put eyebrows here or here, you know. I don't have eyebrows and these little circle like panda mask eyes really do the heavy lifting of what eyebrows would do. They can show an expression. They can show emotion. So I think that's cool. So the raccoon, of course, has that mask. So we can use that same mask to do the expressions. I think with the 
uh, raccoon, we can take it even further by adding eyebrows in. So we've got the expressions from the mask and then also kind of backed up with the eyebrows. So that's one reason why I decided on a raccoon. Uh, the other reason, too, is we've got this here. We've got the panda. Got the little tiny tail here off to the side. Of course, with a raccoon, big, huge tail. So there's a lot of possibilities with that. Let's go ahead and I'm going to make a new layer here and just do some sketching here. Let me just use a gray. I'm using, actually, funnily, funny enough, funnily, haha. -ha. Uh, I'm using the Procreate cartooning brushes here from this set, the cartooning brushes available on Gumroad, which I'll link down in the description if you want to check those out. And from here, let's just do, I'm just going to do a, a stick figure. So let's do kind of like a de dejected, just down on his luck guy. This is going to be kind of the, the spine here coming out. So you can see. He's just kind of boo. He's had a bad day, you know, not much is going right. So we've got that look here overall from the, just the body pose, but adding in that tail, you could have the tail just drooping and dragging here on the ground behind him. Uh, same thing too with that. If you had the raccoon and he's maybe super excited about something, you could have him, you know, jumping and just super, super happy like this. And then, you know, the tail could be doing something cool too back here. And you could add little like motion things to the tail. So uh, with this, basically the tail's almost becoming a, another character. There could be a lot of things done with this. Just brainstorming earlier, you know, with that pointy tip to the tail, you could turn it into a paintbrush, which ties into the whole art side of what I'm going for uh, with the, the let's draw stuff. So that would be super cool too, having kind of grip in the tail and paint coming off the end. Maybe there's a, a paint bucket, you know, over here and the, the tail's coming out and dripping down. So that's another option. That's why I thought the raccoon would be pretty good. So if you guys haven't seen me draw before, uh, yeah, let's get into it. So you don't think that this is, you know, what I actually draw like. So let's go back here and look at this guy some more. So breaking this down even further, one of the things that I liked about this design was let's kind of lasso off the head. So I think the design works and it looks really cute because if we go to the head here and pull this off to the side, you can see the head itself is almost what about one and a half times the size of the body. So as far as the the size from top to bottom. And then also, you know, it stretches out past the sides of the body too. And I think that is super cool. I think it works really well with the design. I think it makes it look, you know, cute and changing up just the eyes and the facial expression is going to do some wonders there too. So I think I want to keep that same proportions as far as the head goes and kind of base it loosely on, on this. So I've got my new layer here. Let's clear this guy out. By the way, I'm using a uh, 4500 by 5400 300 DPI canvas, in case you're wondering. So now that we've got that, next thing I want to do is look at some other examples of raccoons. So with this, let me go to my internet, and we'll just type in cartoon raccoon. I'm not going to go in and actually look at real pictures of raccoons because I know I want this to be super cartoony. And I think looking like this at some cartoon pictures that people have already done, you can start to kind of pinpoint what works, what doesn't work. Now, the one thing I do want to mention with this, I'm not going in and I'm not going to copy anybody else's work. I'm not going to base it on anybody else's work. So if you do go in and look for references, I would urge you just to do it to kind of see the basic layout of stuff and you can identify the pros and cons of why some work, why some don't and make your own unique design. Uh, it's never good just to go in and straight copy somebody else's work and pass it off as your own. We've talked about that quite a bit in the past on the channel and then also in the Facebook group as well. So keep that in mind as you are looking for references. Uh, but let's just kind of go through here and see if there's anything that really kind of sticks out. So the first thing I see is this picture here. So when I think about a drawing of a raccoon or even a cartoon raccoon or anything like that, I kind of think about this basic design. So we've got the, the snout that comes down here, the cheeks that come down into the snout here at the bottom. I think that's the kind of typical thing that you expect. It looks kind of realistic. That's why I didn't want to pull up realistic pictures or real pictures of a raccoon, just because I don't want to go for that look. 
This look here, you can see because of the snout and the nose coming down so far, there's no mouth with this. Of course, you could add in a mouth down here, but I think it's going to look kind of added on. And I want this character and this mascot to really kind of have a ton of options for expressing himself and, you know, different poses, different expressions need to be available and easy to use this type of layout for the head just is not going to work so now that we've got that out of the way we can kind of look and see okay what is going to work so seeing this something like this is going to be a little bit better you see how the nose here set more towards the center we've got a large area down here with tons of space for the mouth so we can really get some good expressions out of that it's going to open up a lot more as far as what is available for the expressions for the design and the character and then just looking through now i'm just kind of looking to see okay what are the different i guess layouts of the face and the mask uh looking kind of at some of these this has a stripe coming down the center this though almost has a very skunk look to it i think it even the the pose and the eyes kind of reminds me of the uh, the skunk from Bambi. Um, this one we've got a stripe down the center. So I think I might want a stripe down the center to kind of break things up. And then it looks like another difference between some of these is the tail. So this one, of course, really angular. This one, you've got kind of the same thickness from beginning to end here, which I don't like because most of the tails I think about kind of are these kind of pointy tails with that Thin up here down to like a thickness down here like the the guy we saw here and like I talked about before we're doing that paintbrush I think that's really going to tie in well with using that as that that paintbrush so I think that's the type of tail that we want to go with from here depends on I guess what you're able to visualize I know some people here would go ahead and save these pictures and then you could import them into procreate and kind of throw them up around the, the sides and the corners shrink them down and drop the opacity to see I think I've got a pretty good idea by looking at these that I'm not going to go off of these plus uh, when you start to throw in stuff on a design and on the canvas you're a little bit more apt to try to use some of the stuff that you see there a little bit too much. So to make sure this is 100% my design and not kind of biting off somebody else's, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to kind of maybe flip back and forth as I need to. So let's go ahead and start the actual drawing. So right now is when all the people that didn't want to hear the thought process behind everything are joining us. So welcome back. I promise there was no smack talk about you while you were gone. Uh, let's go ahead and get this going. I'm on my new layer here. My pencil, I'm just going to use the cartoon sketch pencil that's part of that cartooning brush pack. And I'm going to start out with the head. Like I said, with that panda, I want the head to kind of have that same shape and the same uh, proportions here. So as I'm drawing this, you're going to notice right off the bat, it's going to be the same thing as the panda too, as far as the perspective and just the setup for everything. Uh, with doing character designs, I usually start off with a perspective like this and it's really plain. It's really boring. There's not a lot going on. Uh, you're not changing it into a three quarters perspective or doing anything fun. But the reason I do that is it really kind of helps me see exactly how the character is going to form. And then as I use the character over and over again, then I'll start to kind of do the turnarounds and kind of wrap everything around into different perspectives and can kind of see more of a, a finished 360 look to the, the character design. But to start out with, like I said, I just use basically a, uh, that front facing view to start. And that would be my recommendation to you. Like I said, not the, the most uh, fun way to, to draw. It's not giving the, the viewer, you know, a ton of stuff to look at and it's a little boring and, and bland, but that's the way I start out. So you'll see as I'm bringing this down around here, I'm pulling out the cheeks at the side, like we did with the, panda and then I'm bringing down the chin back and around here so I kind of want those flares coming out on the sides of the cheeks 
So you can see the head dips around, back in, and then back out. Just doing fun stuff like this, really, even though, like I said, it's a front-facing view, not super exciting. It does add a little bit more flair to your designs instead of just drawing like this if we just did, you know, a basic square like that for the head. So just doing stuff like this will make your designs more interesting. So now that we've got the head in there, let's go ahead get the body kind of blocked in here. So I'm going to bring this down kind of a oval here with squared off sides kind of following that as it comes down. I do know ahead of time, I want to put him in a t-shirt. So I'm going to make a ringer collar here. And then for the sleeves, I'll have the rings on the sleeves too. And then I'm going to put my logo right here in the center. Like I said, with it being a mascot for my brand, for the channel and everything like that, the, the Let's Draw with BJ Dell, that's going to be kind of important to have him in the t-shirt with the logo. I'm just going to bring this down, kind of a, another oval here. That's going to be kind of the way the belly comes down underneath the shirt. And then this one, I kind of want him to be a little bow-legged, I guess, to where his legs are going to kind of kick out there on the sides. The knees come out. And to get that look, you'll see I've got this angle here, and then the back is just pretty much coming straight down. I'm going to have to shrink this down just a little bit so I can get those feet in there. One of the best things about digital art, stuff like that. Then let's just do some ovals here. Just kind of block it in where those feet go. And then once we... Go in and finish things up. We can make those look a lot better. This is just the kind of rough way of, of getting everything blocked in. All right. So now that we've got that, let's go ahead and get his arms in here. I'm just going to have them kind of coming off to the side here for right now. We'll come back to those in a second. So we'll get those in there and then go up to the head. All right, so we've got the arms in there. Let's go back up to the head. So here's where I talked about we've got a few different options. I don't want the nose being down here. So I think I want the nose probably about this area here. I want to make sure I'm just leaving enough room at the bottom so I do have room for the mouth. And I want to be able to stretch that quite a bit into some different expressions. So it's really important that I have a pretty decent amount of space for that. I think that's pretty good there for the nose. Now we need to decide how we're going to work the mask into here, how we're going to split up the face. So this is where I'll kick back and look again here. So got a few different options. We got like this guy down here just kind of has the, the curve there for the bottom. I kind of like how this is split up. That's the one that stood out the most to me just because of You've got that big area for the mouth, and I like that, the way it kind of almost breaks. That one's kind of the same way, uh, that it almost breaks that in half. I'm not big on the different color down here. You can see here, um, like I said, what works, what doesn't work. We've got the mouth here, but since we've got this dark area around the mouth, it really kind of hides the mouth. If you just look at that real quick, all you're seeing is that pink circle for the tongue. You're not even seeing the mouth really well, and that's because of that break there and then the colors that they chose. And by the way, I'm going to split this up into two videos. Uh, this one today is going to be the sketch process, everything, and then the outlining. The next video, we're going to be coloring in. But with that one, I'm going to take a deep dive into explaining how I pick my color palette. I know a lot of people have asked that. So that's going to be the next video. We'll talk more about that here in a little bit. So yeah, I think doing something like this is going to be the route that we're going to go for and then kind of work the mask in as we go. So I'm going to start here, I think, down on the sides here. This coming out here, I'm going to have that bottom part come out from there. And then we'll have it kind of angled here. So it's almost like cheeks coming up. That adds a little bit more. I don't think that they did it like the cheeks with the curve. Yeah, they just had it, you know, kind of straight across, not really given too much definition. I think that's a little bit more interesting to approach it that way. And then let's get the stripe down the center here. I think I actually want it to be bigger. Most of those previous ones we saw were pretty small. I think I eventually want to work in a bridge of a nose here too. So if we maybe start out further here. And I think I had some tufts of hair at the top. Yeah, for the panda. I think I want that. If we do a small line down here, like they had, 
those tufts of hair are going to be in two different color sections. The center line, of course, is going to be a different color, so that's not going to work out. So if I do those tufts of hair, I'm going to have to have this a little bit wider. So we'll pull this down. This is kind of nice, too, because once we get everything done, once we get the colors in there, even if raccoons don't have this exact strip coming down and it's not you know, perfect and realistic. It's so one of the, the cool things about cartoons is that you have a little bit more leeway with what you can get away with. As long as people look at it and still know that it is a raccoon, you know, stuff like that you can play around with to really make it work in your advantage. So let's go ahead and get the mouth in here. We'll just do just kind of a split smile here with the muzzle there in the front. And then next up is the mask and the eyes. So with the mask, some people had that, once again, back to here. Some people had that connected, like that one, connected to it. Other people had it coming off from the side there. Like this is almost like a panda way of doing it, like we did with that. I think I'm going to have it connected since we've got the kind of all these lines converging on this point, I really like that. And I think pulling this mask up out of there is going to work with kind of the flow of the design that we already had. So when you see all these lines kind of coming together right there, so we got those three points coming into this fourth one into that one singular one on the outside. I think that all works really well. So there we go. So let's go ahead now and figure out these eyes. So back to our panda. Once again, didn't really like the, this as the mascot design just because like I say, he's got that mean mug and look on his face. We want something a little bit more friendly and accessible. So I want to change the eyes, obviously doing something like that here. Not going to really give the look that I'm going for. Uh, we could do, there's so many different eye types, and this is one of those back and forth types of things. This is why I did this video talking about character design. So if we do, let's say something like this to where it's almost like the quiet type of way of doing the eyes. That, eh, I mean, it's okay. The problem here that we're going to have, much like that one that we just talked about over here, if I can find it again, where I talked about the mouth and not being able to see the mouth all that well, this one here, we're going to have that same problem over here on the eyes because that's the one thing all these designs have in common. Of course, the, the mask of the raccoon is going to be dark. Most of the time it's going to be black or a really dark gray. And doing this, of course, those eyes here, those are going to be black. And if we have this black, Obviously, then you're not going to see it at all. But even a dark gray, it's really going to hide those eyes. You're not going to be able to get a lot of immediately recognizable expressions out of it. So that's definitely not something that we're going to do there. We're going to clear that out. And I think, obviously, we want some white around the eyes. So I'm thinking, you know, a circular kind of oval here for the eyes. So that would be the part that we're going to fill in white and then we could do the pupil in there. So that's going to be a lot more visible because it's going to be the white against that dark color. And then from here we can decide too, are we just going to leave this white into black of that pupil or do we want to have that iris around there? And I think just because, like I said, we're going to do that video about colors i think doing the iris around there is going to be a pretty good idea too because we can talk about the colors there as well so let's do that let's see get this blocked in a little bit more okay so we've got the basic design let's go ahead now and get something else going on with the shirt here we gotta get the sleeves coming down here let's get those i've got low batteries so hopefully i don't run out get those little ringers there and like I said, it's really basic. Um, I don't know what I want to do necessarily with the arms or the hands. If I just want to have them standing, just kind of like the, the panda here, just down to the side. Actually, let's incorporate this a little bit into what I'm doing branding-wise with it being the mascot. Let's put 
I'm going to put like a Apple pencil in this hand over here. Then maybe we can tuck like an iPad in over here. That might look kind of cool. Of course, the iPad's going to be kind of hard to draw. Just since there's no home button or anything, it's hard to kind of show now, uh, you know, immediately recognizable iPad. And then from here, we can kind of draw the fingers wrapped around here. Thumb coming out there. Got the fingers wrapped around this one. And the thumb right there. And we'll fix that and make that look a little bit cleaner when we go back in and ink. Uh, now that we've got this, we can also, like I said earlier, we can go ahead and add eyebrows up here to add even more possibilities for expression. So we're going to get expression out of those eye masks and then also the eyebrows. And I like that these are set up higher too. So that gives an even more kind of innocent, fun looking young character. And then last but not least, then we got to do his tail. So let's bring his tail really fluffy out from over here and just kind of do those. So there we go. That's my really rough, loose sketch of my character design. From here, let's go ahead and ink it. But first, a message from our sponsor. Yes, we actually have a sponsor on this episode. I want to thank Audible for sponsoring today's episode. Audible is the leading provider of spoken word entertainment and audiobooks. With Audible, you can download titles and listen offline anytime, anywhere. The Audible app, totally free. You can install it on all smartphones and tablets. Yep, even your iPad. Cool thing too is you can listen across multiple devices without losing your spot. So for me, I can start out in the studio listening to it, working on the iPad. And then if I've got to leave, I can hop in the car and pick up right where I left off. They have thousands of titles available as well as tons of Audible originals that you won't find anywhere else. Like the one I'm listening to right now, if you've watched the YouTube channel before or you've heard my podcast, I'm sure you know that I'm a huge comic book fan and one of my all-time favorite series is The Sandman by Neil Gaiman, so fantastic, which is now available as an Audible original. So the Sandman Audible Original, not only does it include Neil Gaiman on there, but there's a host of celebrity voices like young Professor X himself. That's right. James McAvoy voices dream. So, so cool. Seriously, when I'm drawing in the studio, I usually have either a podcast or an audiobook on in the background to keep me company, and that's why I love Audible so much. You can help support the channel and get a free trial membership, which comes with your choice of one free audiobook. That's right, you could choose to get the Sandman and join me listening to this when you sign up for Audible at audibletrial.com slash bjdell. That's audibletrial.com slash bjdell. Now, back to the episode. Okay, so now we are back. Let's see exactly what we're going to do with this guy. Really rough sketch, so this is where the magic comes in with kind of bringing everything together. Uh, as you do the sketch, to really recommend you make it loose. Don't feel like you have to stick to the sketch. You're going to see a lot of stuff kind of change and develop once we start to actually ink this in. So I'm going to switch over my brush here. I'm going to go to my standard inker streamline, and then I'm going to make a new layer. This is where we're going to ink on top of. So let's go ahead and turn down the opacity of our sketch layer so we can't see it super, super well. And then we can start inking. Usually with me, I don't know why, I like to start dead in the middle and start with the nose for some reason. It's just my go-to area where I start, I think just because there's so much coming off the nose as far as the eyes and then the mouth and everything. It's just seems like a good, good place to start. So it's up to you though, where you want to start. You can do it anywhere you want. The little shine there across. And then from here, I usually like to go into the eyes. So once again, I'm going to, this one, I'm going to switch back to my standard anchor. I kind of want this to have, more weight here around the top. It kind of gives that illusion of kind of like the, the eyelashes or that upper lid. So if we start down here and don't press very hard and then press harder as we come around, you'll see I'll do this a few times just to get it to look right. You'll see that's a lot thicker there at the top than the bottom and then doing the same thing over here on this side. There we go. So we get that thicker amount up there. These brushes really do work like regular ink brushes. If you're sketching 
uh, this style and you want those thicker line weights coming around with something like that, you would basically just draw one line and then draw another one and then just kind of go in, you know, and color that area in. Uh, you're not getting the, the same brush effect, I know, from a pencil. So if you want to practice with line weights and just want to use a pencil, that's another option. So let's get these eyes in here. Just some ovals around here for those. Drag and drop the color in here. Since this is a design, just a, like I said, pretty basic front facing design. I know a lot of people might take the approach to just go ahead and use the symmetry tool. If you're using procreate, which you could, it's going to save you time. You're not going to have to redraw this from left to right. You just draw on one side. It completes it on the other. However, I kind of steer clear of it quite a bit just because it does look pretty mechanical once you, you get it done. Um, uh, in real life, things aren't 100% perfect from left to right. And doing that in Procreate, it, it does, like I said, save you time, but it looks a little bit mechanical once it's finished. So it's up to you. I choose not to do it, especially with something like this. I want it to have a little bit more of a, a natural feel, but that's up to you. So let's go ahead. And I think I'm going to erase a little bit of that eye because I want this cheek, like I said, that uh, snout part breakup line, whatever you want to call it, coming across there. I want that to kind of come over that eye a little bit. So we'll erase those. Want a little bit over there as well. So we'll erase those and then bring these up. Uh, I think here though, I'm gonna start with the outlines on the side. I'm gonna switch to my streamline. As I go through this then, my outside lines are going to be thicker than my inside lines, just so they work a little bit more like an outline. With this, uh, we'll get into line weight a little bit more later once we do some more completed designs. I've got a ton of different videos about that if you go back and watch some of my other ones talking about line weights and the importance of line weight and how you can effectively use them. For this one, we're not going to talk about it too much. I'm not like I said, just doing this more as a concept. So this one isn't going to be a, uh, a full on tutorial as far as the, the line weights for everything go. Just want to get more of the, the idea of the character fleshed out in this one. So you guys can follow that. I think here I'm going to kind of do like a little overlap just to make a little bit more interesting there. So there's that. Do the same thing over here. Once again, just trying to make sure that I have them the same size from left to right without using that symmetry tool. So there we go. And I think I'm going to do just a little chin down here. So if I bring that up in the center, once I pull these lines around then, I kind of know exactly where I need to stop. We'll get that to a nice point, just since that's our meeting point for all these other lines too. Okay, so now that we've got those lines in, we can go ahead and kind of bring up those cheek lines that we were going to start with here. You'll see I'll go back in and erase some lines if I don't like where they ended up. Don't feel like you've got to do it perfect on the first try if you're doing digital. That's one of the joys of digital is just being able to go back and forth like that. So definitely use it to your advantage. So we've got that. Let's go ahead and get the center lines here. Coming down. Stop it before it goes outside of that line there. There we go. And once again, got to make sure that this looks the same. It does that same break from the left side to the right side. And then also making sure it matches up down here. So I think that's pretty good there. Okay, let's get his mouth in here. Like I said, this area down here, we've got a lot of space that we can go ahead and play with later on once we start 
putting them in different scenarios and positions and stuff like that. It's going to be a lot of fun to see exactly what we can get out of that area there. Get some really fun expressions, some really big stuff. Uh, the other thing is going to work in our advantage too. We've got the chin down here now. So when we start opening up that mouth, we can kind of stretch everything out, elongate it and draw that chin down further. And that's going to help us with the expressions too. So you'll see that part. That chin wasn't in there on my sketch process. It was something that I added in after. Let me get these eyebrows in here. Eyebrows, I always go in heavier on the bottom with line weight and do it not as heavy at the top. It just kind of gives some weight to that bottom part of the brow. Get that cleaned up just a little bit here. Okay, let's move down to the body now. Let's get the ring in here for the shirt. Okay, so this is going to be fun to play around with the rings once we go to the colors. It's going to tie in everything, and that logo of mine is going to go right there in the center. Pull the shirt down here. And then I'm going to go back up in here, get these tapered off just a little bit more, and then also add in some extra tapers just for kind of where the armpits come in and overlap. So little stuff like that, little uh, features and little details like that is when I add those in during the inking process to just kind of drive home the look even closer to what I want it to be. Same thing here, I think uh, around the top of his head, I'm going to go in and add in just some like little random loose hairs here popping around. I think we did that a little bit with the panda. Yeah, I've got some coming off there on the top of the head and then the body. And little stuff like that you can just add in towards the end and play around with, give them a little bit more character, a little bit more personality. Makes it just that much more interesting than a, a basic and plain design. So i got to turn back on our sketch layer here. Okay, so let's go ahead and get the pencil in here. Let's go ahead and I think just do the arm down and around. Go back to my streamline here. And you'll see the grip on this pretty tight grip just because it is closer. It's smaller like a, you know, a, uh, a regular pencil. So I've talked about this before in some of my, uh, weekly art challenge review videos I remember and then also on my video about uh, hands and how to draw them which is on my channel it's not part of the cartooning 101 series but it's part of the let's draw series I did that before the cartooning 101 so definitely check that out and there will be more cartooning 101 videos here soon too so if you guys are a fan of those stay tuned um, working out some new stuff with those that you might be excited about so that's why that series is still in the process of. All right, so we got our little Apple Pencil there. Let's go ahead now and go back over to this side. We'll go ahead and get the iPad in there. And here you really want to go back and forth to make sure if you are zoomed in, make sure on stuff like this, you zoom out enough that you can tell, okay, is the fingers on this side, are they going to be the same size and look the same as the ones on the other side? So you need to go back and forth with that. And we'll do that thumb here coming from behind. I think this I need to fix just a tad bit. You'll see here this finger kind of blocks the rest of that apple pencil coming down and around just looks kind of off so if we go back in here change this up just a tad it will kind of help the whole thing look a little bit more natural so just bringing that out and you see now that pencil comes down here and it's going to be blocked off by the leg here coming down so i'm gonna stop this before it gets too 
the foot and I'm going to bring in just like a little crease here. It's one thing I like to do with feet is just kind of bring that like that to where it meets the foot as it comes up and around. It doesn't go directly into that leg. You just got a, a cool little crease there. Just kind of my own style that I've developed over the years. I know a lot of people ask that too is, you know, how did you find your style? How do you develop a style yourself? And Honestly, if you just keep drawing, you're going to you're going to develop your own style and the more you draw, the more your style is going to change. When you think you have a style, it's going to kind of evolve and turn into something else. It's just something that happens naturally over time. So, if you're still struggling to find your style, give it time, it'll eventually come, believe me. And uh it probably won't stay the same. <laughs> it'll change uh with with the years and the more you draw, the more it's going to change. So, this one is a little bit too sharp. I like the look of this one better. So I'm going to draw this again. Not following that as well. Looks a little bit better. So here's another thing, like I said, kind of part of my style. If we kick back here, because that was the other thing I, I did notice looking through these. A lot of the raccoons typically have those little small, tiny paws, tiny hands, tiny feet. And with me... I have that certain style that I draw hands and feet a certain way, especially with cartoon animals. And this is just kind of that, like I said, that style I've developed. So that's why I don't try to stick too close to anything. Like if I'm using a reference photo or if I'm, you know, doing some research on a design, I'll just kind of, like I said, stop for a second until I get so far and then just make it my own to make sure that it is my style, that it is, out of my imagination and like I said, not trying to bite off somebody else's hard work. That's one of the worst things as an artist I know is getting something up and then other people stealing it or claiming it as their own and stuff like that just sucks. So, so let's get this. Oh, let's get the rest of the iPad in here. And we'll just fill that in black. Now we need to do the tail. So let's get him wrapped in around here. Might kind of maybe add in some little flares like that around there. And once again, you see I made that real thick around the bottom just by pressing harder with the pencil. Just to show a little bit of line weight there from the bottom. Okay, and there we go. My chair is being noisy. Um, that's basically our finished design from the initial concept stage, knowing that I wanted to go with this and then going with the sketch and into this. And you can kind of see how it evolved from the sketch. Doesn't look exactly the same. Tried to do, you know, pretty close, but just went ahead and played around too. Some of these line weights are kind of wonky and I would do this a little bit different with more time. But like I said, more than anything else, it's just showing you the process of the character design and how I think about it and how I approach it. So hopefully you guys found this video informative. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit that bell for notifications so you can get alerted when I post new videos. Like I said, this is part one of this video. Part two is going to be up later on. That one's going to be talking about coloring. So we're going to talk about how to work out a color palette the thoughts that go into that, how I approach it, how I decide to put a certain color against a, another color and just the whole thought process behind it. So hopefully you guys will find that one informative and come back to that. If you guys haven't yet to join the group over on Facebook, keep creating. I will link it in the description below a place where you can share your art, meet new friends, give feedback, get feedback. It's an awesome place to be. And I want you guys to be a part of it as well. Also have that new podcast too. If you guys have not listened to it yet, it's called make money with your art, all about how you can turn your passion for art into either a part-time side hustle just to bring in a little cash or possibly even a full-time career. I walk you through all the different platforms that I use some tips and tricks and my outlook on making money with your art, with my art. I want you guys to uh, be able to maybe, do something like that with yours. So if you want to tune in, it's available wherever you listen to podcasts at. As for me, I can be found online, bjdell.com, as well as on Instagram and Twitter at bjdell. So until next time, keep creating.